It's June again and time for some solar upgrades. In this episode I share how awesome my makeshift solar setup performed so far and upgraded to double the power. So 3 years ago I put a 300 watts panel on my garage roof with a cheap microinverter to set off my utility costs. The setup cost for the panel and the inverter were 250 euros in total plus 80 extra for the optional monitoring unit. My calculations predicted that the setup will pay off in 5 years. What I didn't expect was the energy crisis and the development of the power costs. Back then it was about 25 cents per kilowatt hour. Now it ranges between 40 and up to 60. This is changing everything. My 300 watt panel produced almost 700 kilowatt hours with the laziest setup ever and paid itself off after 3 years already. But there are also some other changes. Meanwhile I also got a smart meter and I'm allowed to connect up to 600 watt to the grid. The 600 watt is a safety limitation here in Germany. To get around that you need to get a proper installation which would also add to the cost. You have to check which regulations apply to you. So don't take here anything as advice. It's just a documentation of my personal adventures. There are plug and play alternatives, but these unfortunately are twice as pricey. Still an option though. For my setup I still got a second unused 300 watts panel in the garage that I would like to install to get up to the limit of 600 watts. The microinverter I got before was working great, but I only have the 300 watts version. So I either spend another 150 or get something cheaper with better features. And I like cheap. I checked AliExpress for some units that would handle two panels and found this one which supports two panels and Wi-Fi for monitoring with an app. It came with all parts you need including the bus cable connectors, which is nice. The bus cable is basically your AC main power connection, providing ground, life and neutral. On my old installation I didn't want to expose the mains to the weather, so I used long solar cables and placed the inverter inside. With more panels this becomes more inefficient, so I need to put the bus on top of the roof and the inverter underneath the panels. I bought a proper weather resistant cable in the hardware store and attached the provided connector to one end. Nice. The other end will get this regular European power plug. Just like my old installation I will just plug it into the wall outlet. First of all I detach the old inverter and remove the old solar cables. With the extra panel I need to extend my well-crafted mounting brackets. Putting it on the edge of the roof I get a slight tilt for free and the bus wire will be less exposed. Now the bus is threaded to the hole in the wall and I can attach the power plug inside to plug it into the wall. I marked the live and neutral wires on the plug and checked which one is the live wire of the wall socket with my face tester. The microinverter powers on once the panel is connected. To use the Wi-Fi you need a hotspot in range. 
The setup of the app was weird, but once it was connected, everything was working well. For testing, I measured the current on the live wire of the plug with my clamp meter. With this slightly cloudy weather, it was showing 1 amp at the power plug and about 250 watts in the app, which is about right. Washing of the remaining Sahara sand might also help a bit. I also showed in the last video that cooling the panels can give you 10% more yield, which is nice for testing the maximum output. Before we take a look inside of the inverter, let's see how it did perform unmodified from factory for the first days. I must admit I'm surprised. With this crappy setup that cost me 350 euros in total, I'm already able to harvest 3 kilowatt hours a day with good weather, which saves me already at least 1 euro a day. Now there's one change that I'm worried about and that's having the mains on the roof. I'm not sure if this particular device is as weatherproof as promised. The last one was completely potted, which is great. Uh -oh. It's raining and I left it in the open on the roof. It got a bit wet. It has a gasket sealing the covers. And the electronics have a conformal coating. This actually smells nice. It's not the thickest layer, but it should protect it from any residual moisture and surface corrosion. On a closer look, there were a few flaws though. The gasket is not covering everything and it looks like the slit here isn't tight. I need to fix that. Design-wise, all the transistors are tied to the heavy aluminium side. However, with the gasket there, it's only little thermal connection to the covers, which would provide also some heat exchange. It would also help if the thermal adhesive pad on the transformer didn't still have the protective film on. The thermal pads on the transistors look okay though. I will just add some silicone cogging to the corners and some extra to the LED, even though it looks fine. This is going back to the roof and will be tucked underneath one of the panels to be protected from direct rainfall. I'm overall happy to counter the energy crisis a bit. If you don't want to mess around like I do, the plug and play systems, even though twice as pricey, will probably pay off in 4 years as well. My dad even poked me that all his neighbors already got one and he wants one too. So check in if you are curious about that. Also coming up, how to set up a lifetime EV charging flat rate for about 1000 bucks. So see you next time, bye!